on the screen. Okay, uh, let us try to demonstrate an example of a function that you want to obtain the optimum solution that involves with two variables. As you recall from the previous uh, two or three lectures, we already discussed about how to figure out the area of the gutter so that it will be maximized. We want to maximize the area of the gutter that you see is shown on the shaded area on the screen. Now, as you can see, the shaded area of the gutter, basically it has the shape of the trapezoid. And the trapezoid, it have two parallel sides. And the area of the trapezoid, you know already from high school year, it is equal to the summation of the two parallel sides. You add them up. And then you multiply with the perpendicular distance h between them, and then you divide by 2. So based on that high school year formula, which I already explained in detail in the previous lecture, you have no problem to figure out the area of the gutter is given by that first formula that you see on the screen. Now. The question is, uh, you look at that formula of the area of the gutter of the trapezoid, okay? You can see there's three variables there, B, L, and theta. However, suppose there is some constraint, which basically say, assuming that the width of the material to be bent into the gutter shape is 6, that means what you have is that if you take the distance L of this edge, add with the base, which is B, and add with another edge distance, which is L, the total material you have is 6. Like 6 inch or 6 meter or whatever, okay? So, because of that constraint, we say B plus 2L has to be equal to 6. So, based on that, at least you can eliminate one variable. For example, you can solve for B in terms of the other two variables, which is equal to uh, 6 minus 2L. Okay? So, that means uh, whenever you see a variable B, you replace by the formula 6 minus 2L, then clearly the area that you want to maximize will be a function of only two variables, which is L and theta. Now, there's a few important remarks here. The first thing is, in order to maximize the cross-sectional area of the gutter, the angle theta that you see on the screen should be somewhere between 0 to 90 degree or pi over 2 radian. The reason is because if the angle theta is in this range from 0 degree to 90 degree, then the area of the gutter can be maximized. If you go beyond 90 degree, so for example, if you go the angle theta, like from here to there, okay? Well, that means that kind of shape, it will not give you the biggest area compared to the situation when the angle theta is somewhere between 0 and 90 degree. So that is the, the first observation that you should have in order to see the limit or the lower bound, upper bound of the variable theta. So theta should be somewhere between the lower bound 0, upper bound is approximately around 1.57. Also observation, the variable L should be 
less than or equal to 3. It should not be bigger than 3. The reason is because if, three, uh, if the length L, if it is bigger than 3, then the length B will have a negative value and that have no physical meaning. So for that reason, the maximum L you should have should be less than 3. Okay? So, so far, what we want to do is we say because the material is constrained, B plus 2L have to be equal to 6. That is the constraint. You can express B in terms of 6 minus 2L. And that will make your area of the gutter to be a function of L and theta. And keep in mind that in order to have an optimum solution by observation of the picture, theta should be somewhere between the lower bound, upper bound, like 0 and 1.57 radian. And the upper bound of the L should be 3. Okay, so based on that observation, let's see how do we proceed to figure out the optimum solution. Which means, in this case, maximizing the area of the gutter. Okay, after you replace the variable B in terms of uh, 6 minus 2L, then you can see the cross-sectional area of the gutter that you want to maximize is given as a function f that involved with the first variable is length and the second variable is theta and that is given by that formula the first equation that you see on the screen now according to the theory of multi-directional search what we want to do first will be in initially suppose we select as your initial guess as your initial guess okay L is equal to zero and theta is equal to 0 0.52 as you can see this initial guess satisfies the low bound, upper bound like I just said a few minutes ago. So, in with this given initial guess, what will be the next thing that we can do? Okay. So far, I only tell you about the initial guess for L and the initial guess for theta. Let's see what happened to the next few slides. So here it is. You see, in the beginning, we try to do iteration 1 along the direction of the first variable. The direction of the first variable, we call it direction 1, 0. What does that mean? What does that mean? What it means is that f that you want to maximize is a function of l and theta however since now we want to optimize along the direction one zero that mean theta is a fixed value which is equal to 0 0.52 based on your initial guess that value theta never change let's say for now we only want to know what should be the value of l the length so that the function f is optimum. So if you go back to the previous slide, you replace theta by 0 0.5236 into the previous formula. You see, whenever you see theta, you replace by the initial guess 0 0.5236, then you will get the function f that you want to maximize express in terms of the variable l only okay because theta is fixed equal to 0 0.52 now this problem is easy why it is easy because now you have f is a function of only one variable l and because it is a function of only one variable you can use the same theory, the similar example that I already did for you using Golden Saxon search method 
or using Newton method. You see? In this situation, we decided to use golden section method to solve it. So how does the golden section method work in this case? We assume the lower bound and the upper bound for the length is initially estimated to be 0 and 3. Then, according to the golden section method, we will calculate the two inserted interior point, x1 and x2, based on the formula that I developed for the golden section algorithm. As soon as you can calculate x1 equal to 1.85 and x2 equal to 1.14, you can figure out the function at those two locations. And the value are 3.6 and 2.6. Okay? And then you can calculate the length of the interval, which is basically equal to the difference between the upper bow and the lower bow. And the length of the interval is 3 right here. So this parameter epsilon represents something like the length of the interval. Okay. Once you know f at x1 and f at x2, you say, ah, f of x1 is higher value than f of x2. Because of that reason, you only have to update the new lower bound and the new upper bound remain the same, 3.0. And then, once you know the new lower bound and the new upper bound, again, golden section one to calculate two interior points. But keep in mind, out of those two interior points, 1 1.8541, that point you already calculated in the previous iteration. So you need to calculate only one new interior point. And as soon as you know x1, x2, you calculate the function at x1, the function at x2, and you calculate the length of the new interval. How do you get that number, 1.8541, by the way? That is the difference between this new upper bound 3.0 and the new lower bound 1.1459. So you keep doing that according to the golden section until you go to iteration number 10. And at this point, you will see the new lower bound is 2.62. The new low upper bound is 2.66. Those new lower bound, upper bound, they are very close to each other. So if you subtract these two value, upper bound, subtract lower bound, you will see that the length of the interval now is 0 0.03. And assuming you say the stopping criteria is if it is less than or equal to 0 0.05, let's say assuming that is your stopping criteria, then you stop. So when you stop, your answer will be equal.